Welcome to Garden Delights. I'm Susan Howington, Family Consumer Science Agent with the Henry County Cooperative Extension, partnership with the University of Georgia Cooperative Extension. Today we're going to talk about pumpkins and we'll also hear from Frank Hancock, our Agriculture and Natural Resource Agent. So we'll check him out in just a little while at the Community Gardens. See you back in just a little bit on Garden Delights. Welcome back to Garden Delights. Today we're talking about pumpkins and you know, I love this time of year and I also love pumpkins too. So let's talk about why pumpkins are so good for us. You know, they are cholesterol free, they're sodium free and they're fat free. So there's three good things about it, but it's also loaded with vitamin A and vitamin C and it has a lot of good potassium in it. So you can see this lovely, piece of fruit is awesome as far as what it has in it. So let's talk about when you're going to select that, that um, pumpkin. It really depends on what you want to use it for. If you're going to use it for a jack o you can get it any size you want. But when it comes to baking, like we're going to do today, you want to choose one 10 pounds or less. And the reason why is because the smaller ones are better for baking. They're sweeter and they also don't have the stringy part of them like a larger pumpkin. The, the outer skin is also going to be easier to carve and so it's easier for you to make whatever you're going to make with those. So as far as the filled ones, yeah, they're okay. You can use them. They're going to be stringy, but I would go with the smaller one. Now as far as keeping that pumpkin, you'll notice this one has a nice thin uh, stem to it, which is very important because you want to make sure you have a stem and it's intact. You do want to look at your pumpkin to make sure it doesn't have any bruises um, because it is going to store longer and you can store them up for months before you decide what you want to cook with them uh, as far as that goes. But you do want to cook them in a, uh, I mean, put them in a cool, dry place. That's going to be important. Well ventilated. Um, and just, you know, make sure you don't have any bruises, anybody picking it up and putting it back down. And I will tell you this too. One thing that they always teach is don't, don't grab your pumpkin by your stem. Try to grab it from like this because you don't want to pull on that stem and make it where it detaches and then it is going to decay um, and it's not going to keep as long as that month. So when we come back, we're going to hear from Frank Hancock, our agriculture and natural resource agent. He's going to be out at the community gardens and he's going to be interviewing some of our community garden volunteers. So it's going to be great. So we'll see you back in just a little bit on Garden Delights. Today we're up here in the garden at Heritage Park. We're in the process of changing over to our fall garden from our summer garden. So we got a lot of green vegetables being grown and planted here. And a lot of gardeners out here working today. Uh, in the fall, it's a good time to be taking some soil samples. So we're going to talk a little bit about soil sampling here. And uh, also, uh, the our number one uh, brochure for the garden in here is our uh, gardening in Georgia, which has got the, the calendar inside of it that tells you what to plant, where, and when. Uh, we've also got a distribution box up here in the park where people that are coming through visiting can pick up a brochure that talks about various things in gardening. So for today, I'm gonna start off here with uh, some soil sampling. This is a soil sample bag right here. You can also put your sample in a Ziploc bag to bring it in. Uh, cost eight dollars, takes about 10 days to get the results back. And what you would do is you'll go around here in uh, eight or 10 places in the garden and, and we're going to dig down uh, about four to six inches in the garden and, uh, and bring each scoop out of here and we're going to put it in this bucket. So we don't want to just get in the best place or the, or the worst place. We'll kind of spread it out here 
Uh, it takes about a cup of dirt to fill up a soil sample bag. And so I'm taking these, these different plugs here. Let me reach over here a little bit and, uh, and get some plugs from various places to, I want a good representative sample of what this plot looks like. Because when the good recommendations come back, it's gonna tell me if I need to have, uh, if I need to add any lime or exactly what I need to do to, to grow vegetables in this plot. So, so then what we're going to do after we do that, I'm going to take these samples that we collected and I'm going to mix them together. The samples need to be dry. We don't need to do it on a, on a rainy day. Uh, so then we'll take our soil sample bag and we'll fill out all the information on the front of it. And then we'll add, we'll add our soil to the bag. And we fill this bag up to this line on the bag right here. Seal it up, bring it into the office, and it's ready to go to the lab at the University of Georgia to be processed. That's kind of how you would pull a soil sample. Uh, also, in the in the fall garden and in the in the spring garden, insects can be a problem, especially with your leafy greens. You get uh, cabbage worms and and all sorts of things that want to attack and eat, eat holes in the leaves. So we use uh, this Monterey Garden Insect Spray, and you'll notice it says OMRI on it. That means that it's approved to be used organically by the organic manufacturers research institute. And so they're the people that decide if things can, can or can't be used organically. So we got a label here. We need to keep the labels attached. This will kill your soft-bodied insects. The active ingredient in this is spinosad, and um, it will take care of some of the soft-bodied insects, the worms and things. The other product that we use is Pyganic. Uh, and you see it also is OMRI certified. And it's, it is a kind of a knockdown insecticide. It doesn't stay around very long, maybe a day, and it, and it dissipates, but, but it will knock down your flying insects and, and things of that nature. So those are the main two products that we use here. Uh, we use regular fertilizer for the most part. We don't try to, to do purely organic fertilizer. But uh, so that's kind of what we're doing here today. I got a lot of gardeners here. So I thought we'd just take a few minutes and let them tell you what they're doing. My name is Latanya Wilson. I, I actually am a first time gardener. I started about three years ago doing a, a plot on behalf of my sorority. So I'm really new to this and I love the experience that I get from the master gardeners. But today for the fall gardening, I am planting collard greens, um, kale, cabbage, and I'll probably get a, a few more greens. My name is Greg Rivers. I've uh, been gardening out here. Uh, actually, my wife's been gardening out here uh, for the last seven plus years. And she got me involved in the gardening and as you can see uh, we have planted here today uh, collard greens, uh, lettuce and we have some broccoli. Um, really enjoy the gardening out here. Uh, it, 
it relaxes you, gives you a sense of uh, uh, quietness. And uh, one of the uh, great things that I like about uh, gardening out here, uh, as you can see, you can see your product actually comes to fruition. Hi, my name is Dawn Washington, and I've been a gardener out here at Heritage for the last four seasons. It's been a great experience. I wanted nothing to do with gardening uh, most of my life. My dad liked to plant things when we were in New Jersey. My husband liked to plant things. I didn't want anything to do with gardening. I found it to be very therapeutic. So when my cousin moved here from, uh, from Sandy Springs to McDonough, we actually uh, came out here got a plot, and we started gardening. I love being out here. So in our fall garden, as you see, uh, we have cabbage going up. We have some collards, it's another variety. And today I put some kale in the garden. I worked with the Fairview Library, and a couple of weeks ago we did an installation over in Fairview at the library to get people in that community involved in gardening. Good morning, everybody. My name is Marjorie Thomas. I have been at this garden for over seven years, and it is a pleasure being here. Um, I've learned a lot since I'm here through the assistance of Frank, and because of that, it has moved me to another level. I am now coordinating another garden for the county, which is um, not very far from here. But for this garden, I did not give up my plot here. And the reason being, I like the camaraderie that is here. And what fascinates me more is with the children, when they're asking, what is this? A simple tomato, a simple pepper. And I'm so glad that they get to know where their pepper come from, and not from the supermarket, but from the garden. I'm Peggy. This is my husband, Chris. We have been gardeners here for uh, probably a little close to three years. Uh, when I retired, um, I decided that I wanted to do something other than just sitting around my house. So I inquired about uh, doing some gardening and I found out about the community garden here in McDonough and was very interested in it because it gave me an outlet uh, being retired where I could get out, get some sun, get some knowledge about planting because I didn't know anything about gardening. And I found out about the Lunch and Learn programs here in McDonough, and that gave me extra interest as well. And it's been a learning experience for me. I, don't, I haven't always had success in my gardening, but I've learned so much in the three years that I have been gardening. You know, I like seeing the things grow from the dirt up. You know, you go to the grocery store and you see the, the price of things and say, well, I can grow it myself. And it's so true. We have done it. From learning from other people, Frank amongst other people, it's just been so encouraging. Hi, my name is Jenny Dantley, and I've been here at Heritage for about five or six years now. And I enjoy working in the garden. I've learned a lot of things. I've now become a master gardener, where I've learned a lot about not only gardening, but other things that um, around nature. And uh, I also help with the uh, in this helping hand pantry when the uh, gardeners have overflow of vegetables. I didn't. I donate it to the pantry. So that is one of my things I like to do to help other people who need food. And we also have another community garden that helps so do the same thing. I'm uh, Herman Dennis, and um, uh, what I like about the gardening itself, it gives you the opportunity to meet and greet all types of people, young, old, children, as they walk through and admire the beautiful uh, vegetables, uh, the plants that is set out here. They have questions, oh, what is that, and, and how you get to do that? And you get the opportunity to showcase your skill, you know, by telling them what to do if they plant a garden of their own. I was recently given the opportunity by Dr. Hancock 
uh, going over to the senior citizen home and helping them with uh, the gardens. Uh, we recently went out and planted some vegetables and some of the raised garden beds that they have. And the, the elderly people, they was really, really excited about doing that. And, and I'm just excited about helping them and they are, as they are, about learning what was going on. Okay, not much left for me to say after, after the gardeners got through telling you what's going on up here. Uh, so the only thing I can say is let's go see what Susan's fixing in the kitchen. Welcome back to Garden Delights. Today we're talking about pumpkin and we're also going to make a really good recipe that's going to be really tasty. Um, and you know this time of year you can't beat anything with pumpkin to me, but we're going to be making pumpkin spice snickerdoodles. Very, very simple and you can see I don't have a whole lot of ingredients, but let's go through and how see how simple it is to make these cookies. So first of all, the recipe is gonna ask you for one stick of melted butter. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my bowl. And then the recipe is also going to ask you for about a third of cup of brown sugar. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Let's see if I can just get it in there. See if I can stack these in order though. And then the next thing, you're gonna have granulated sugar and this is about a half a cup. So I'm gonna add that. And then you're going to need, see if I can stack a little bit now. You're going to need one egg. So I already have one egg ready to go. And then you're going to also need some pumpkin. So this is, you know, there's different types of pumpkin when you buy it in the store. If you're not buying your own pumpkin and cutting it up and cooking it to get what you need as far as a pie, cookies, whatever. But this is pumpkin that you get out of a can. And I will tell you, it's not pumpkin spice pie because that has all the, the, um, the spices in it. So I didn't want that because I want to put my own spices in it to spice my own cookies up. So the recipe is going to say for pureed uh, pumpkin. And so that's what I have. So this is good old plain pumpkin. It's nothing to it. It's just good cooked pumpkin. It doesn't have any spices to it whatsoever. And so once you get that in, that's about all you're gonna need for the pumpkin. And then you're gonna need about a teaspoon of vanilla just to kind of add to it. So once you have that, we have all that kind of in together. And this is gonna be the, the wet ingredient. So, and it, the good thing is, you don't have to use a mixer for this. You're just gonna use all by hand. So what I wanna do is just mix this up really, really good. Make sure all the sugars and the pumpkin and the butter are all messed, uh, you know, mixed up together. That's the best thing to do is to get this all ready. Because then once I have the, the wet ingredients all mixed up really well, I'm going to add my dry ingredients. And I want to make sure this is really smooth because I don't want any lumps in my cookies either. So I want to make sure it's really nice and moved together. So I want to make sure I get it all incorporated. And, um, you know, Pumpkin, you know, they talk about pumpkin and how well the season's going to be sometimes. So we really have to pay attention to that because we don't ever know if the season's going to be good or it's not going to be as good. But hopefully this year the pumpkins are going to be great. So I almost have this kind of mixed up like I want it. I see a little bit of pumpkin and I want to make sure that I have it mixed up. But you can tell now that I have the butter and the other ingredients all mixed up nicely together. And notice it doesn't use like a whole lot of sugar and a good thing is it does use some, some uh, brown sugar also. So for the flour mixture, you're gonna use plain flour. This is a one and a half cups. Um, and in the recipe, and I already have this kind of mixed together, it's baking soda and cream of tartar. So you, I have this already mixed up in here. And then it's uh, gonna call for some spices. And this is the pumpkin spice um, spices that you can get that's already mixed up that has like your ginger, your um, cinnamon, other, in, so you don't have to do it individually. But if you want to, you can. So this is all mixed all together. So I'm going to go ahead and incorporate just a little bit of the flour into the mixture. And before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and add my other spices, which is the pumpkin spi spice pie. And this is the uh, cream of tartar and the baking soda. So I'm going to go ahead and add those into this. 
before I forget. So that should be all that. And then I'm just going to kind of mix this around just so it, it, um, it won't be in just one location. And I'm going to mix a little bit more of the flour. And before I add any more flour, what I really want to do is make sure I get it mixed in with the wet ingredients. So you do want to make sure that you get it all incorporated really well. So that's what I'm going to do now. And these cookies um, will make about a dozen um, at one time. So you, unless you've got a big pan, all together it's going to make 24 cookies. So you'll just have to wait and see how you want to do it. You can do 12 at one time or you can do 24, but it makes about 24 total. So I have this mixed in pretty good. So I'm going to add some more flour. Now you can tell that this dough that I'm mixing together for these cookies is a little wet. So the key to these cookies to make them where you can roll them in the cinnamon and the sugar, which makes them more like the snickerdoodles, you will want to put this dough that I have for the cookies in your refrigerator. And in the recipe, it's gonna say at least an hour, but I would recommend at least an hour for sure because I have made these before. And um, another thing, if you want to do it really quick and you want to get them cooled, uh, you know, cool through and through, you can put them in the freezer for about 10 to 15 minutes to chill the dough. But you do want it, um, the dough, you want it to be um, chilled. And the reason why is it's so much easier when you get ready to roll them into the little balls that you're going to end up making. So this looks really good. It looks like the, the flour is all incorporated. And you can see, um, it is wet looking, so when you put it in the refrigerator, it's going to become even better as far as you being able to roll. So what is it going to look like once you get ready to bake those? So I do have some ready to be baked. I've already rolled them. In the recipe, it's going to say a tablespoon of, of cinnamon, and then it's going to say a half a cup of your uh, sugar and that's going to be what you're going to mix together and that's what you're going to roll your cookies in. So I have these already rolled out and I want to show you what it looks like. So these are about 12 on my cookie sheet and I have them spaced out. So what you're going to do is cook these for about 10 to 12 minutes depending on your oven and you'll cook them at 350. And I can't wait to put them in the oven to bake so Frank and I can taste them. So we'll see you back in just a little bit on Garden Delights. Welcome back to Gardner Lights. We have Frank here with me, and guess what, Frank? I love pumpkins, and I have a really tasty cookie. This is pumpkin spice snickerdoodles. All right. So are you ready to taste them? They smell really good. They really do, don't they? I've been standing here smelling them. I know, me too, and I was thinking, oh, let's go ahead, Frank, and let's go ahead and try them. They shouldn't be too hot, because I just took them out, so let's see what they are like. Mmm. Good. That's good. Very moist. Mm-hmm. And I love cinnamon anyway, too. I may have to eat lots of these, Frank. Very good. It's, it's fluffy. Mm-hmm. Looks like it'd be heavier than it is, but it's It's very light, light isn't it? Yes. And the ingredients that you put in it, it's not bad, so that really. That means we can eat more of them. That's right. That's what I thought about, too. Mm hmm Hmm. That's really good. Well, we went up to the garden, and uh, we started off talking about fall garden. And all the gardeners were up there, or most of them, not all of them. But, uh, so they were all talking. So I couldn't get a word in edgeways, so I just handed them the microphone and told them to tell us about the garden. To take off with it. So that's what they did. They did you tell any of them to plant some pumpkins so we can make more pumpkin cookies? No, we're a little late to plant the pumpkin. That's what I thought. The fall garden. <laughs> that is what I thought. So we'll just have to get them like we got that one right there. That's exactly right. Well, you're going to love these, this recipe of these cookies. They're really, really light, like Frank said. They're very tasty. Check out the website for the recipe.
It's going to be one you want to keep. And Frank and I will see you next time on Garden Delights. And don't forget what they always say. What's that, Frank? You already forgot. <laughs>